somebody drop off this uh, piece of furniture and they want it glittered uh, all over and uh, we decided yeah we'd like to take that project on uh, and we're going to go ahead and start taking it apart right now. So at this point I'm going to move this over to the paint tent. I'm uh, going to paint it uh, with a base coat of black and then we're going to start uh, lacquering and glittering. Hi there. Um, so this is the vanity all broken down into its components which is a mirror frame, a stool, four drawers and the vanity itself. Um, they've all been prepped, they've all been painted and now it's time for the next step which is the fun step the glitter step. All right. So um, we're going to go ahead and start with the mirror and we're going to go ahead and uh, brush on a polycrylic and then we're going to put glitter on top of that and then we're going to seal it. Okay. We're going to use city lights, which is our fabulous black holographic mix. And uh, hopefully it's going to be stunning. Now, before we move on to that, uh, I want to tell you what we did in terms of this base paint. It is um, a really high quality paint and primer in one and it's gloss and I always recommend using gloss with glitter uh, so that if it shows through what you're looking at is gloss. Um, if you use a matte, like a matte primer um, and no gloss and you s happen to see it, it's going to dull it down a little bit. So I always recommend uh, putting gloss spray paint down. My polycrylic here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stir it. It recommends stirring it beforehand and also during use. Um, it looks milky, so you think you're painting something on that's sort of opaque, but it dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, just, uh, you know, have faith. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to finish stirring here. I'm going to put my respirator on. It's not really that stinky, but it's just never a good idea to expose yourself to a lot of fumes, all right? So uh, here we go. Okay, so what you've seen is the back side of this mirror, and uh, the reason I start on the back side is I always start in an inconspicuous spot to be able to test not only my sealer, but my glitter, the adhesion, the temperature outside, all of the above. So I always start in an inconspicuous spot. So the back side of the mirror, the most you'll ever see is this little edge right here. Okay, so what we've got going on here is um, I put down the polyacrylic, uh, then sprinkled the um, glitter on top. I'm going to go ahead and do a little close up here for you so you can see what it looks like now. And then of course we'll be doing layers and layers and layers of overcoats which will make it really glossy. But right now you can at least see it in its raw stage. So you can see that it's already sparkling and it's not even very light in here. But you can see the kind of coverage that I was able to achieve on here. And again, this is just the mirror frame. The mirror's missing right now. Okay, so you can just kind of see there's a lot of detail. I made sure that I got a lot of the glue in the, uh, see these slots right here? Have to make sure you get the glue down deep in there or else the glitter doesn't stick. So here at the end of this piece, you'll see a whole lot of fluting. It's really important. You get the um, polyacrylic in each one of these flutes so that the glitter will stick in there. Okay, so you can see really pretty even coverage. Hi, I wanted to go over a tip with you. Um, when you are uh, brushing um, the glitter on and you didn't get enough polyacrylic or whatever material you're using, uh, so you dip back into the polyacrylic, you're basically contaminating the container. So if you're working straight out of this, dipping, brushing, dipping, brushing, then you found, oh, I missed some glitter, blah, blah, blah. You go and you brush it on your thing, gets a little glitter on here, put it in here. Now this has glitter in it. So uh, the tip that I like to use is uh, you can get these nice small mason jars. They're not very tall. You can pour some of that into here. And then this becomes your contaminated pot. Okay, so if you have missed a spot and you need to go in and you've got a little glitter on this and you put it into here, it doesn't matter because um, 
you know, you haven't contaminated the whole pot, just this jar. And since you're still working with that color, it's okay that a few flakes get in here. So uh, they're really handy. The mason jars, um, you can just go into your local store and ask for um, the canning section. They'll have the big tall ones. I recommend the short ones because uh, you don't have to dip your brush in as far. Um, if you had a big tall jar and you just had a, an inch of it at the bottom, you'd have to work really hard to get in there. With these nice short jars, you don't have to work very hard. And the best part is they come with a lid. And it's so easy to just like, oh, you got a phone call, you just stick the lid on, you go take your phone call, you don't have to worry about it drawing out. Whenever you're laying down glues and uh, polycrylics and these things as a glue, not as a, a, not as a finish, but as a glue, something for the glitter to stick to, don't do thin layers. Uh, the glitter will hide a lot of the um, a lot of the stroke marks, um, but you need to have a sufficient amount of glue, or in this case, sealer, acting as a glue, for that glitter to hang on to. So now is not the time to be stingy. You want to make sure there's plenty down. I'll do a close up so you can see what I mean by plenty down. See that? That's what I mean by plenty. Depending on how warm it is outside, you may um, brush the whole side of this. Or if it's too hot and it dries too quickly, you might just do part of it. In which case, make sure you do the bottom part. <laughs> now, being the base coat, this is not super important that you brush it on beautifully and, you know, like a lacquer. Um, that's not the point. The point is getting it on nice and wet and making it so that glitter wants to stick to it. So normally you have to worry about brushes going all in the same direction and beautifully, blah, 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 blah. Not really with your base coat, not when you're glittering. That's for your top coats. This base coat is get it on fast, get it on wet. That doesn't mean you want drips, you know, but at the same time, you only have so much time to work. Here we go. We're going to blow this on. Okay. If you're seeing unevenness, it might be the glitter, but most likely it's just the glare. You'll see that it's really quite even. Okay. So the stool is done and um, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and let it dry. But what I wanted to tell you is that if for some reason you, um, you didn't do a great job and there's a lot of spaces that are open, um, don't worry about it at this point. Um, there is a step you can do, it's extra work, but it will work and that is when you go to do your first top coat, you're going to actually mix some glitter in with it. Okay, so you're going to take uh, like a little jar or a cup, small amount of this, and you're going to mix uh, some of the glitter directly into it, and you're going to make a, a pretty, you know, good mixture, and you're going to go ahead and uh, brush it on over the top of this dry coat here. And that's going to be your first seal coat, but your first seal coat is going to also have glitter in it. Now, you'd only do that if you've made a, a botch of the job. You certainly don't want to... Um, go and do a seal coat with glitter in it unless you absolutely have to because you know, you're know you going to have to put more seal coats on than you normally would if you do that. But it is a way to save your project. So if for some reason you know you blew it on or you dropped it on or whatever and it just doesn't look right to you, uh, you wish it was more even or there just isn't enough glitter on it and you want more glitter. Mixing up a little seal coat batch, putting it over the top of your dry. And you got to let it dry or else it'll you know peel up the first layer. So you got to let this dry at least a couple hours, and then you can go over it with a, a coat uh, with glitter and polycrylic in it. And then let that dry, and then go ahead and do your uh, final uh, seal coats. Okay, so that's just a little tip for you. Hi, so today we're going to go ahead and do the top of the bench um, of our uh, space vanity. And we found this groovy space pattern 
um, satin fabric and we're going to go ahead and put it over the vintage uh, bench cover here. Okay, so uh, I have completed the top of the um, vanity bench um, with our space pattern. So we're working on the design part of the space vanity. We've done our city lights on all our edges um, and now we're actually doing like the nebula. And I found some beautiful pictures of um, the, I guess it's supposedly the Orion nebula. And so I'm basically recreating it here. Um, on this panel, and every single panel of this desk will have a different nebula on it. Um, just having fun, kind of uh, laying down sections, and then um, kind of dusting the glitter and kind of blowing it, and just doing different techniques um, to kind of achieve our nebula. So I'm about ready to start the next section here. I'm uh, putting down polycrylic, which is a, a water-based. Uh, it's drying pretty quickly, but not super, super quickly. But you know, it's something you definitely have to work fast. So I'm just laying down small sections at a time. And with nebula, uh, for the most part, you don't have hard edges. So I'm just kind of laying it down with some, instead of a hard edge, and kind of feathering it. But if you had a design where you had hard, hard edges, you could just go to the hard edge or use tape or something like that. Nebulas are soft. Just kind of laying down my darkest colors first and then building them up so you can actually get some depth when you build up the colors. So today is um, our final day on the space vanity. Uh, we have done the um, glitter on the panels that we wanted to, the colorful glitter, which is like our nebulas and our stars and all that stuff. It's all on there. Um, our trim of the city lights uh, mix with the holographic is here. This is straight holographic. Um, and we've got our bench and our four drawers and our mirror all glittered. Very exciting. Uh, so we finished glittering yesterday, and just as a recap, we used the polycrylic. The thing about polycrylic is it, it doesn't have really any scent, so you don't have to wear a respirator using it, although I, I tend to, to do it anyway just because uh, I'm really careful. Um, but truthfully, um, it, it's not that bad. You work outside. It's not, you know, really a problem. Um, so I like it for that. It's water cleanup. What could be better? The problem is I don't think that going over glitter with it is the best solution when you want a really high gloss. Um, I always turn to um, urethane resin for that, okay? And I, I do that because, one, if I'm going to go into a project, I really want it to last and I want it to look good at the end. So I invest in the more expensive urethanes. And um, this is the brand that I use because I'm a metal sculptor. So I come at it from um, outdoor and industrial <laughs> uh, because I don't like to do things twice. Uh, but this same thing, which is the Sculpt Nouveau Everclear Part A and B, um, urethane 
this stuff is the best. Uh, it can sit outside. It doesn't yellow. It goes on completely clear. It stays clear. Um, I have sculptures that um, have been um, sealed, you know, for, I don't know, maybe six, seven years with, you know, no change, which is really impressive for uh, steel sculptures outside. So I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. Um, you can brush it on uh, if you don't know how to spray, but spraying is preferred. Um, the other option is flow coating. Uh, the flow coating is, is thinner than some of the other ones, so you have to be prepared for um, not as thick, you know, like some of the other brands that we've talked about in the videos, they give you like a full eighth inch. Um, if you flow coat this stuff, you won't get that, that kind of thickness. Um, and not always, that's not always desired, so, uh, you know, you'd have to play around with it. But uh, I like to spray it. So today we're going to spray, I have a lot of surfaces. So if I was to hand brush this entire vanity, the whole top, the sides, the everything, uh, it would be hours. And since I'm planning to do like five coats, it would literally be like all day. Um, the beautiful thing about this brand is you don't, as long as you recoat within an hour, you don't have to sand it. So it's a beautiful thing. You can you know, brush it or spray it or whatever. And as long as, you know, it's within the 50 to 80 degree temperature range, um, you can go ahead and just lay down another coat, no sanding. And a, a lot of these products like to be sanded. So it, it's, that's lovely to avoid that, especially with all these kinds of surfaces and glitter doesn't like to be sanded, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So that's why I love the Sculpt Nouveau uh, Everclear. Okay, um, I'm just going to show you a couple other things here. Um, when you're dealing with glitter, you obviously have uh, loose glitter that happens. That's just part of the game. Um, you can certainly fire up your compressor if you own one, but if you don't, investing in these um, spray cans is really handy. Uh, you just want to have, uh, I, I want to go over it with you because there's a couple of little things about this, these spray cans. Um, one. Uh, if you pull this trigger for too long, it actually gets so cold, it'll actually shoot like frost out and you don't want any water, uh, of any kind on here before you urethane. So you want to just do light hits like this, just light. As long as you do it light like that, just these little bursts, the can tends not to get cold and you know, you shouldn't have any problems. If you were to sit there and just go spray, 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 the can gets cold, frost starts coming out, there's water, and you got a mess. So definitely um, little, little bursts. And the reason I like to use it is one, you get the dust off, because there's always dust. Even if you've just let something sit there for 10 minutes, there's dust. But also it gets any loose particles up. Now, if you were to do full force on this can, because it can actually generate a lot of force, you can actually strip your glitter off. So be careful, you know, just use it just lightly. Okay. Something like that. Okay. I've got my, uh, two parts in here, A and B, and I'm going to be, uh, stirring them for about 10 minutes. It's really important to really thoroughly mix it. I know it's really boring sitting there stirring something for 10 minutes, but with a urethane, if you really don't mix it well, it won't cure properly. And then you've done a, a huge mess. So uh, it's better to continue to stir it. Um, you can use a squirrel cage at the end of a drill. That's one of those blades that spins around. Um, those are handy. I find that they put a lot of bubbles in, but you know, uh, if you're going to be letting this sit and rest for about 10 minutes anyway, the bubbles tend to go away. So the squirrel cage is, is a great way to go. Uh, today, I'm just gonna go ahead and chill out and stir away for about 10 minutes. All right, so I have mixed the AB. It has sat the appropriate amount of time, about 10 minutes. I've got it loaded into the sprayer and I wanna go over one thing. We had flirted with the idea of doing um, a clear iridescent over the entire surface of this thing, okay? We chose not to, but if we had, what we were planning to do was to actually mix it into the first coat of urethane, okay? So what we do is you'd mix up your urethane, separate out, you know, one uh, layer's worth, like, you know, a cup or something, mix some of the um, solvent-resistant iridescent glitter in there, and put it in and spray your first coat with that, okay? Then your second coats would be without the glitter, all right, so um, we chose not to do that, so I'm not going to show you that, but if you felt like you wanted to have an all over, you know, iridescent um, shine on this, first coat with the glitter, the uh, second, third, fourth, however many coats you're going to do without the glitter. That way it traps, you know, that, that layer, okay? 
So uh, here we go. I'm going to fire it up and get rolling. Okay, we just finished our first coat. No drips, looking good. We're going to let sit for about a half hour, come back, check it. If all's well, we're going to do our second coat. When do you know when the next coat should be done? You can't necessarily look at the clock and go, okay, exactly 20 minutes. Um, it has a lot to do with environmental factors, uh, humidity, uh, and most importantly, heat. So today uh, we're running at the high end of um, the, the range, which uh, is no colder than 50 and not really any higher than 80, although I've pushed it to 85 and gotten away with it. Um, so, you know, 50, you've got a longer dry time, you got more time, you know, between coats. 80, 85, not so long. So uh, rather than keeping your eye on the clock, although that's a good idea, just to make sure you never run past an hour, you want to be able to touch it lightly if, and not see your fingerprint, you know, when you lift up. Uh, so you just want to lightly touch it and uh, you want to feel a little pull, a little tack, very little, um, but at the same time, not leave a, not really leave a, a fingerprint mark. Uh, and if you have that, then, you know, you're good to go. Okay, coat number two, coming up. You know, we always talk about you wanting to do it in well-ventilated spaces. Uh, it's true, you do. But at the same time, bugs are a big deal. So... Uh, we work in an enclosed tent when we spray, uh, and then we use respirators. Uh, we do that because of bugs. Uh, we're out here in um, bug country, so uh, they love to come fly and doop, drop right on there. And then you got legs, and you got bodies, and you got a mess. So we work in an enclosed tent. Um, if you don't have an enclosed tent, or for ventilation reasons you can't work in one, or you don't have like, a garage that you can't seal, um, or, you know, for health reasons, uh, keep an eye on your bugs, <laughs> you know, uh, they, they, I don't know what it is. They're attracted to this stuff. So if they, uh, if they smell, you know, nasty chemicals, they're like, whoo, come flying. So, uh, keep an eye on it. There's nothing worse than having like, you know, this is your centerpiece right here and thunk right there. You got a bug. Um, you know, not only do you have to deal with the cleanup, but then you have to spray a whole nother coat or two, you know, just to deal with that. So, so keep bugs in mind. No one wants to think about them, but, you know, when you're spraying and lacquering and uh, urethaning and all that, you got to think about them, okay? So keep your eye on the bugs. Okay, so see me looking weird? Right. So what I'm doing is actually looking for drips. Um, the thing about drips is they're, they're sneaky. Um, you think, oh, that looks great. Come back 10 minutes later. Oh my gosh. There's like this whole panel is dripped. Uh, <laughs> so they're tricky. So what I like to do is, um, look for them. Now, the thing that, you know, you do is you just kind of look, oh, you know, it looks good. No, you got to look at different angles because the lighting will sometimes hide a drip and you look at a different angle. Oh my gosh, there's this huge drip or, you know, there's like an orange peel, which is that, uh, it's a look that sort of looks like an orange peel where it's spotted like that. You can get these looks, and it looks perfectly good looking at it straight on. But then you look at an angle, and you're like, oh, my gosh. So take a look at your piece from different angles. Like, for example, right here, drip. Didn't see it until I got at that one little angle. So um, just grab it and just kind of lightly pull it off. Um, try and do minimal work. When you're spraying, the last thing you want to do is see brush marks. And um, when you're using urethane, natural bristles only. Um, these little crummy brushes are fine for fixing drips. If you're going to actually brush on uh, urethane, go ahead and get a really nice expensive or at least moderately expensive natural bristle brush. Okay, natural only. Okay. Okay, I don't know how many of you have seen these, but these are called strip lights. They're these tiny little LEDs and they come on a, on a long strip. And what I'm going to do is actually put them on the back side of this so that they will shine against the wall and it will make the uh, mirror glow like a moon. <laughs> so instead of it being in the front where it would blind you because you couldn't see because the lights would be so bright, I'm putting it on the back. 
Now, these particular lights are very special. They're not just white. They're all kinds of colors. It's the full spectrum. And it comes with a remote control, which is hilarious. Little remote control. So this will be in the drawer. So if anyone wants to fire up their uh, space vanity, not only will they be able to have, you know, a nice white moon glow, but they can go like a full color. And I think it's even programmable. So you can have like, like flashing lights and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, it's really groovy. Mickey, space dog. <gasps> space dog. <laughs>